The Britonic, Brythonic or British Celtic languages form one of the two branches of the Insular Celtic language family, the other is Goedelic. The name Brythonic was derived by Welsh Celticist John Rees from the Welsh word Brathon, meaning an indigenous Briton as opposed to an Anglo-Saxon or Gael. The name Brythonic derives ultimately from the name Britonic, recorded by Greek authors for the British Isles. Some authors reserve the term Britonic for the modified later Britonic languages after about AD 600. The Britonic languages derive from the common Britonic language, spoken throughout Great Britain south of the Firth of Forth during the Iron Age and Roman period. North of the Forth, the Pictish language is considered to be related, it is possible it was a Britonic language but it may have been a sister language. In the 5th and 6th centuries emigrating Britons also took Britonic speech to the continent, most significantly in Brittany. During the next few centuries the language began to split into several dialects, eventually evolving into Welsh, Cornish, Breton, and Cumbrook. Welsh and Breton continue to be spoken as native languages, while a revival in Cornish has led to an increase in speakers of that language. Cumbric is extinct, having been replaced by Goedelic and English speech. The Isle of Man may also have originally spoken a Britonic language, later replaced with a Goedelic one. Due to emigration, there are also communities of Britonic language speakers in England, France, and YWLADFA. Name the names Britonic and Brythonic are scholarly conventions referring to the Celtic languages of Britain and to the ancestral language they originated from. Designated Common Britonic, in contrast to the Goedelic languages originating in Ireland, both were created in the 19th century to avoid the ambiguity of earlier terms such as British and Cymric. Brythonic was coined in 1879 by the Celticist John Rees from the Welsh word Brathon. Britonic, derived from Britain, and also earlier spelled Britonic and Britonic, emerged later in the 19th century. It became more prominent through the 20th century, and was used in Kenneth H. Jackson's highly influential 1953 work on the topic Language and History in Early Britain. Jackson noted that by that time, Brythonic had become a dated term, and that, of late there has been an increasing tendency to use Britonic instead. Today, Britonic often replaces Brythonic in the literature. Rudolf Thurnason used Britannic in his influential A Grammar of Old Irish, though this never became popular among subsequent scholars. Comparable historical terms include the medieval Latin lingua Britannica and Surma Britannicus and the Welsh Brythonog. Some writers use British for the language and its descendants, though due to the risk of confusion. Others avoid it or use it only in a restricted sense. Jackson, and later John T. Koch, use British only for the early phase of the common Britonic language. Prior to Jackson's work, Britonic were often used for all the P-Celtic languages, including not just the varieties in Britain but those continental Celtic languages that similarly experience the evolution of the Proto-Celtic language element K2 P. However, subsequent writers have tended to follow Jackson's scheme, a rendering this use obsolete. Evidence Knowledge of the Britonic languages comes from a variety of sources. For the early languages information is obtained from coins, inscriptions and comments by classical writers as well as place names and personal names recorded by them. For later languages there is information from medieval writers and modern native speakers, together with place names. The names recorded in the Roman period are given in Riverton Smith. Characteristics the Britonic branch is also referred to as P-Celtic because linguistic reconstruction of the Britonic reflex of the Proto-Indo-European phoneme asterisk KW is P as opposed to Goedelic C. Such nomenclature usually implies an acceptance of the P-Celtic and Q-Celtic hypothesis rather than the Insular Celtic hypothesis because the term includes certain continental Celtic languages as well. Other major characteristics include 
the retention of the proto-Celtic sequences Ammon and which mostly results from the proto-Indo-European syllabic nasals, Celtic, with became GW in initial position, W internally, where in Gaelic it is F in initial position and disappears internally. Proto-Celtic asterisk windows, white became Welsh Gwyn, Cornish Gwyn, Breton Gwyn, contrast Irish Finn, fair. Proto-Celtic asterisk wasus, servant, a young man, became Welsh, Cornish and Breton GWAs, initial S. Initial S followed by a vowel was changed to H. Welsh hen, old, here, long, haffle, similar, Breton hen, ancient, here, long, hamvel, similar, Cornish hen, ancient, here, long, haffle, similar, contrast Irish shorn, old, s-i-o-r, long, sawild, similarity, initial s was lost before, l, permeter, and, n, asterisk Sleeman became Welsh l-l-y-f-n, Cornish leaven and Breton l-e-v-n, smooth, Contrast Irish Sleewin, smooth, slimely, asterisk Smaru became Welsh Mare, Marrow. Contrast Irish SME acute AR. The initial clusters SP, Senior, SW became F, FR, CHW. Asterisk S era became Welsh FFER, asterisk Srogna, Nostril, became Welsh Fran, Cornish Frig and Breton Fran. Contrast Irish SRON asterisk Swero, toy, game, became Welsh Quara and Breton Seahory, Lenishan, voiceless stops became voice stops in intervocalic position, voiced plosives B, D, pogram, and permeter, became soft spirants in an intervocalic position and before liquids. Welsh DD, TH, TH, Theta, F, V, Cornish DH, TH, TH, Theta, V, V, Breton Z, Z, H, V, Voiceless Spirants, Germinated Voiceless Plosives transformed into Spirants, P, K, T, became, X, Theta, before a vowel or liquid, Asterisk Sippus greater than Breton KEF, Cornish KYF, Welsh CYFF, Tree Trunk, Asterisk Catos greater than Breton KAZH, Cornish Cath, Welsh Cath, Cat, versus, Irish Cat Asterisk Bucca greater than Breton Bock, Cornish Bow, Welsh Bosch, Cheek, Voiceless Stops become Spirants after Liquids. Asterisk Artos, Bear, became Welsh Arth, Nasal Assimilation, Voice Stops were assimilated to a preceding nasal, Britonic retained original nasals before T, whereas Goadelic alters NT to D, Breton Cant, 100, versus, Irish CE Acute AD, Classification, The family tree of the Britonic languages is as follows, Common Britonic Ancestral to Western Britonic Languages Ancestral to Cumbric Welsh Southwestern Britonic Languages Ancestral to Cornish Breton Britonic Languages in use today are Welsh, Cornish and Breton. Welsh and Breton have been spoken continuously since they formed. For all practical purposes Cornish died out during the 18th or 19th centuries but a revival movement has more recently created small numbers of new speakers. Also notable are the extinct language Cumbrook, and possibly the extinct Pictish although this may be best considered to be a sister of the Britonic languages. The late Kenneth H. Jackson argued during the 1950s, from some of the few remaining examples of stone inscriptions, that the Picts may have also used a non-Indo-European language, but some modern scholars of Pictish do not agree. History and Origins The modern Britonic languages are generally considered to all derive from a common ancestral language termed Britonic, British, Common Britonic, Old Britonic or Proto-Britonic, which is thought to have developed from Proto-Celtic or early Insular-Celtic by the 6th century BC. Britonic languages were probably spoken prior to the Roman invasion at least in the majority of Great Britain south of the rivers Forth and Clyde, though the Isle of Man later had a Goadelic language, Manx. Northern Scotland mainly spoke Britannic, which became the Pictish language, which may have been a Britonic language like that of its neighbours.
The theory has been advanced that part of Ireland spoke a Britonic language, usually termed Ivanic, before it was displaced by Primitive Irish. Although the authors Dylan and Chadwick reject this theory as being implausible, during the period of the Roman occupation of England and Wales, Common Britonic borrowed a large stock of Latin words both for concepts unfamiliar in the pre-urban society of Celtic Britain such as urbanisation and new tactics of warfare as well as for rather more mundane words which displaced native terms. Approximately 800 of these Latin loan words have survived in the three modern Britonic languages. It is probable that at the start of the post-Roman period Common Britonic was differentiated into at least two major dialect groups, Southwestern and Western. Between the end of the Roman occupation and the mid-6th century the two dialects began to diverge into recognizably separate languages. The Western into Cumbric and Welsh and the Southwestern into Cornish and its closely related sister language Breton, which was carried to continental Armorica. Jackson showed that a few of the dialect distinctions between West and Southwest Britonic go back a long way. New divergencies began around AD 500 but other changes which were shared occurred in the 6th century. Other common changes occurred in the 7th century onward and are possibly due to inherent tendencies. Thus the concept of a common Britonic language ends by AD 600. Substantial numbers of Britons certainly remained in the expanding area controlled by Anglo-Saxons, but over the 5th and 6th centuries they mostly adopted the English language, the Britonic languages spoken in what is now Scotland. The Isle of Man and what is now England began to be displaced in the 5th century through the settlement of Irish-speaking Gaels and Germanic peoples. The displacement of the languages of Britonic descent was probably complete in all of Britain except Cornwall and Wales and the English counties, bordering these areas such as Devon by the 11th century. The regular consonantal sound changes from Proto-Celtic to Welsh, Cornish and Breton are summarized in the following table, where the graphemes have a different value from the corresponding IPA symbols. The IPA equivalent is indicated between slashes. V represents a vowel, C represents a consonant. Remnants in England, Scotland and Ireland. Place names and river names the principal legacy left behind in those territories from which the Britonic languages were displaced is that of toponyms and hydronyms. There are many Britonic place names in lowland Scotland and in the parts of England where it is agreed that substantial Britonic speakers remained. Names derived from Britonic include London, Pennycook, Perth, Aberdeen, York, Dorchester, Dover and Colchester. Britonic elements found in England include Bree and Balfour Hills, while some such as Coom or Coom for a small deep valley and Tor for a hill are examples of Britonic words that were borrowed into English. Others reflect the presence of Britons such as Dumbarton, from the Scottish Gaelic Dunbreathire, meaning Fort of the Britons, or Walton meaning a town or settlement where the Wheel H Britons still lived. The number of Celtic river names in England generally increases from east to west, a map showing these being given by Jackson, Derwent, Darwin, Dare, Arda, Dower, Darrant, Went. In fact these names exhibit multiple different Celtic roots. One is asterisk, Dubri, Water, Brett, Dower, Dower. De, also found in the place name of Dover. This is the original source of rivers named Dower. Another is asterisk Deruo, Oak, or True, Brett, Derv, Derau, Deru, coupled with two agent suffixes, asterisk Kent and asterisk Q. This is the origin of Derwent, Darrant, and Darwin. The final route to be examined is Went. In Roman Britain there were three tribal capitals named Uenta, whose meaning was place, town. Britannicisms in English Some have argued that Celtic has acted as a substrate to English for both the lexicon and syntax. It is generally accepted that linguistic effects on English were lexically rather poor aside from toponyms, consisting of a few domestic words. 
which may include hubbub, dad, peat, bucket, crock, crumpet, noggin, gobnook, and the dialectal term for a badger, i.e., brock. Another legacy may be the sheep counting system Yantantethera in the West, in the traditionally Celtic areas of England such as Cumbria. Several Cornish mining words are still in use in English language mining terminology, such as Costian, Gunnies, and Vug. Those who argue against the theory of a Britonic substratum and heavy influence point out that many toponyms have no semantic continuation from the Britonic language. A notable example is Avon, which comes from the Celtic term for river Abana or the Welsh term for river Avon, but was used by the English as a personal name. Likewise the river Ewes. Yorkshire contains the word USA which merely means water and the name of the river Trent simply comes from the Welsh word for a trapper so it has been argued that the use of periphrastic constructions in the English verb, which is more widespread than in the other Germanic languages, is traceable to Britonic influence. Some however find this very unlikely and claim a native English development rather than Celtic influence. Though Roberts postulates Northern Germanic influence, despite such constructions not existing in Norse, literary Welsh has the simple present caraf equals I love and the present state of year wyfy and karu equals I am loving, where the Britonic syntax is partly mirrored in English. In the Germanic sister languages of English there is only have one form, for example ich liebe in German, though in colloquial German, a progressive aspect form has evolved which is formally similar to those found in Celtic languages, and somewhat less similar to the modern English form, e.g., ich bin am Arbeiten, I am working, literally, I am on the working. A similar structure is also found in modern Dutch. These parallel developments suggest that the English progressive is not necessarily due to Celtic influence. Moreover, the native Engelsch development of the structure can be traced over the over 1,000 years of English literature. Some researchers argue that English syntax reflects more extensive Britonic influences. For instance, in English tag questions, the form of the tag depends on the verb form in the main statement the German Nichtwa, and the French N-E-S-T-C-E Pa, by contrast, are fixed forms which can be used with almost any main statement. It has been claimed that the English system has been borrowed from Britonic, since Welsh tag questions vary in almost exactly the same way. However, as these are fairly late developments in English and even later in Welsh and Gaelic, it is more probable that the Celtic languages borrowed the structure from English. Britonic effect on the Goadelic languages far more notable, but less well known, are Britonic influences on Scottish Gaelic. Though Scottish and Irish Gaelic, with their wider range of preposition-based periphastic constructions, suggest that such constructions descend from their common Celtic heritage. Scottish Gaelic contains a number of apparently P-Celtic loanwords but as there is a far greater overlap in terms of Celtic vocabulary than with English, it is not always possible to disentangle P and Q Celtic words. However some common words such as manad equals Welsh manid cumbric asterisk monad are particularly evident. Often the Britonic influence on Scots Gaelic is indicated by considering Irish language usage, which is not likely to have been influenced so much by Britonic. In particular, the word strath is a native Goadelic word, but its usage appears to have been modified by the Britonic cognate Eastrad whose meaning is slightly different. The effect on Irish has been the loan from British of many Latin-derived words. This has been associated with the Christianization of Ireland from Britain.